Now, we look at Lightroom Classic quite a lot here on Tutorial Tuesday. Usually we're editing a photo or we're looking at one specific element of the program. But today, we are going to take a look at five different tools within Lightroom Classic that I use all the time. They really speed up your workflow. They make your life a lot easier. They're just very, very useful. Some of them you might have seen before. Some of them you might not. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every on every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Let's just jump into Lightroom Classic and start with the first tool. Now, all of these tools are going to be things that speed up your workflow, make your life easier as a photo editor. So we're going to be looking a little bit at some uses of AI, but not things like generative fill or where you add things to the photo, things like that, right? We're not looking at AI use in that way, but AI that can just speed up what would otherwise be just quite time consuming tasks and maybe give you a good kind of starting point for your photo. So the very first one we're going to look at is the adaptive profiles. So you can see here we've got a photo this is completely unedited. What we can actually do to start with this photo is get Lightroom to give us a really nice starting point. We can come here to the profile selector where you can see we've got Adobe Color and we can actually click on that and click here, Adaptive Color. If you don't see it there, you can come over to the Profile Browser by clicking those little four squares, and then just come to the Adaptive area here, and we're gonna look at Adaptive Color. Now, as I mouse over that, you can see what it's gonna do, but essentially, Lightroom is analyzing the photo and making adjustments based on what it thinks are gonna work best for this photo specifically. So it's not a generic adjustment for any photo. You can use this on any photo, but it's always gonna be slightly tailored to the photo you're applying it to. So if I click on this now, you can see maybe I quite like that, right? Maybe I don't. But if, if I like it, but I think it's too much, I can come up here to this slider at the top and I can actually reduce this down from 100 or even further up if I wanted to. Now, what's quite nice about this is it is independent, if I close the profile browser here, of all of your sliders. So you can still edit it in any other way that you want with that adaptive color profile on top as well. And you can then come back and reduce it if you want to, but I can still come in and adjust the shadows, for example, bring the highlights down, maybe up the contrast a little bit, the clarity. I can do pretty much anything that I want with the photo but I've now got that additional kind of starting point on top of things, which can be a really useful way to actually get going with your photo if you don't know exactly what you want to do with it. Now, following on from that, and very similarly, we have adaptive presets. That allows us to affect parts of the photo with essentially a preset, but without affecting the whole photo. And this can be a really, really good way to just speed up your workflow and just make your life a lot easier, right? So for example, with this photo, I might want to make my dog here, Nala, stand out a little bit more in the photo. Just brighten her. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do that, right? I could actually just bring the shadows up, seems to work reasonably well, right? I could do something like that. I could actually go in and mask her by clicking on the masking tab here. I could use a brush. I could select subject. If I select that, Lyra's going to select Nala there. That's done a great job. Let's get rid of that mask though, because there's an even easier way to do that. Let's come back over to the general editing tab. Over on the left, we've got our presets, right? And we've got a few here that are listed as adaptive. Now, in this case, we want to look at adaptive subject. If I wanted to brighten Nala here, I can open up the adaptive subject presets, mouse over something like pop, warm pop, any of these really. Let's go with warm light, for example, right? If I left click this, what that's done is created a mask. It's created a subject mask. So it's already found Nala. Let's click on the mask and see what it's doing. It's bringing the exposure up a little bit, the shadows up a little bit, and it's just applying a little bit of warmth as well. And I think it looks really good. Now, could I have done that manually? Yes. But it's an awful lot quicker to just mouse over here and click that. If I don't like the amount that it's applied, I can go in and individually change these sliders so I can see exactly what it's done and I can change that. Or I can just reduce the overall amount up here on this slider for this actual mask. So it's a super easy and quick way to be able to do that. Now, there's lots of other adaptive presets you can see over here. So let's look at adaptive sky, for example, right? I could actually mouse over some of these and it's gonna show me what it's gonna do, right? It's gonna really affect that sky, and it's probably a bit much. I mean, some of these dark drama, blue drama, it's too much. Some photos, it's maybe gonna work better, but other ones, not so much. So we wanna look at one that we think is gonna work quite nicely. Gold now, look at that, that looks really nice. So let's left-click that, 
And what you'll see now is that Lightroom has added another mask. This time it's a mask of the sky, right? So if I click on that mask and press O on the keyboard, you can see where the mask is applied. And then let's look at what it's done. It's just warmed this up quite a lot. It's brought the saturation up as well. So we're getting nice lots of colors in there. I could then go in and adjust the mask as much as I want. I could bring the highlights down, for example. I could bring the blacks down. That's gonna make it look crazy, right? I can still adjust the mask as if I've made it, as if I've gone in and manually done this but it just speeds up my workflow again. If we move over to a portrait now, you can see on the left, we've got adaptive subject, yes, but we've also got adaptive portrait, which is even more specific to portraiture, right? So let's start with adaptive subject here. Let's click on pop. That's just gonna actually find our subject and then add a little bit of exposure so we can see the mask that's been applied there. So that's great. That just makes us stand out a little bit more in the scene. Let's come up to adaptive portrait now where we've got lots of different options for what we might wanna do. Enhanced portrait, for example, is going to create a few different masks. Glamour portrait, similarly, is gonna do quite a lot there. Polished portrait, we've got a few options here. And we've also got some options to do individual things, right? Enhance the eyes, whiten the teeth, smooth the skin. Let's go ahead and click Enhance Portrait, which I think is a nice one to use. You can see that's created a few masks, facial skin, which is being smoothed by bringing things like the clarity and the texture down. Eye sclera, which is the white to the eyes, and I'm never 100% sure that I'm saying that right, but that's just actually brightening that a tiny amount. The iris and pupils being brightened a little bit as well, and the teeth, which I don't think are particularly visible in this photo, are being brightened just a little bit as well. So we've got some nice kind of additions to the photo, but we can still go in and do more to this. So for example, we could click enhance eyes as well, and you can see if I mouse over that, you can see that it is really making those eyes pop, probably too much. Let's say we did want to do that. So we can still click on that and then just maybe bring the amount down on this slider to make it a little bit more realistic, a little bit more natural. Okay, there we go. And you can see we've made immediately a reasonable difference to the portrait. Let's close the masking panel so you can actually see what's going on here. And we've, again, like I say, it made quite a big difference immediately. And it just speeds up things like enhancing the eyes, smoothing that skin, making those differences to your portraiture that you're gonna do anyway, and you could absolutely do it manually, but it's just quicker and easier to do it with these adaptive presets, which you then have full control over anyway. So it just is speeding everything up. Another tool that can be really useful, especially for portraiture actually, where you've got a defined subject in the scene is the lens blur tool. So on the right, if we come all the way down here, you'll find the lens blur tool just here, right? And what this is essentially gonna do is enhance some out of focus areas, right? Some kind of depth of field effects. Now I find that this always works better when you already have a slightly shallow depth of field. So here, for example, we do have a little bit of that. It's just gonna make it feel more natural, right? Always this is gonna look better with the right lens, right? If you get this right in camera, it's gonna look better. But if you only have a kit lens, for example, and you know, you, you have to make do, right? This can be a good way to get a little bit more of that feel without having to go out and buy what is possibly a reasonably expensive lens. Yeah, we can save that for later. We can save that for later. So all we have to do here is click apply and Lightroom is gonna work out where the subject is and the depth of the photo is gonna actually create a whole depth map. We've actually got a whole video explaining exactly how this works and how to kind of use it really well. But essentially, you know, you can see this is pretty subtle, but we can actually bring the blur amount up to something like, let's bring it up to 75. And you can see we're just blurring out that background, but our subject here, which is me, obviously, is kept nice and sharp, nice and in focus, right? If we bring this all the way up to 100, you're just getting that separation between the background and the subject, which is quite nice. It gives you that quite nice shallow depth of field feel to your photo. It's gonna work better on some photos than others. You know, I think it's actually a pretty useful tool, not for every photo, but you know what? It, I have absolutely used it when I've only had certain lenses available to me, but I want a certain look to the photo. The next tool that I think is crucial and I use all of the time, pretty much in every single photo, basically every video we do in Lightroom, I will use this tool, is intersecting masks, which is so powerful. There's so much you can do with this. And essentially this is where you can draw one mask, but have it only be applied when it intersects with another mask that you draw. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we come up here to the masking panel, let's create a new mask. Let's go ahead and do a linear gradient. Let's bring that down, right, from the top down, right? But we only want this to affect the sky. So we want the linear gradient. We want to be able to darken the top of the sky, 
but only behind Nala, my dog, there, right? So all I have to do is come up to the mask, right click, intersect mask with. Now I could select sky or I could select background. In this case, let's select sky. And what you'll see is that it pops behind Nala there. And then I can affect the mask like so, right? I could darken this sky if I wanted to. It might not be what you want to do, but it gives you an idea of kind of what we're doing here, right? And it gives you a great look to what we can do. Now we can still move this mask around, right? We can still change the angle of it. Maybe we want to do something like that. Great. I think that actually looks quite nice. Let's go ahead and do another mask. Let's do a linear gradient coming in from the from the right. This is the direction roughly that the light seems to be coming from. Let's just actually bring that exposure up and maybe the dehaze down. And then what I want to do is actually brighten this side of Nala. So I'm going to do a radial gradient, right? Something like that. But let's intersect mask with select subject. And now that radial gradient, so we get a nice feathered gradient, is now only applied onto our subject. And if I come up here and just bring that exposure up, you'll see that I'm able to, I mean, if I bring it right up, you'll see that I'm able to actually brighten one side of her. I can still move this around if I want to. And I can just brighten that side of her that I want to be facing the light and immediately get quite a different look to the photo. If I wanted to come in and do a similar sort of thing here, let's do a linear gradient. Just bring it in like that, but let's right click intersect mask with select subject and then darken that side of her. Now, all of a sudden, we've actually darkened one side of her, brightened the other side, darkened a bit of the sky behind her, lightened a little bit of the other bit of the photo, but without actually intersecting the mask. We've done quite a lot there, and I will use this for all kinds of things. Right, it's such a useful way to be able to draw your masks in behind different things, in front of things. Just a very, very useful way to not have to go in and manually maybe brush this in or remove certain areas. It's so useful. Now, with that in mind, the last tool that we're going to talk about is letting AI actually do a lot of your masking for you. And the reason for this is you could do it manually, but there's kind of no benefit to doing it manually when you can let the AI do a really good job for you. And it's quite quick. You can still adjust the mask afterwards. Absolutely. You can still add to it. You can still remove things. It's not always going to do a perfect job, but it just speeds things up. And if you're editing lots of photos, right, you want to, that's, that's not the most fun part of it, drawing a mask. You want to get into it. You want to get, kind of get excited about it. So for example, with this photo, let's say that we wanted to mask this area here. Now, I don't know if Lightroom is going to be able to pick that up as a subject. I would have thought so. Let's click subject. And there we go. Lightroom has masked the kind of rock here. But let's say that it couldn't work that out. Or let's say there was a different subject in the scene. We can actually just come in and click on objects here. And all we have to do is do a rough mask around this rock. Let's do something like this, right? Something like this. And Lightroom's going to work out what I'm talking about and mask the rock, right? Great. If we were looking at a portrait photo like this one, we can go and create a new mask. Of course, I can select subject. Absolutely. We've looked at that before. I could select the background, which is going to allow the rest of the photo, basically, that's not the subject to be selected. Let's delete that mask. But I can come in and actually select people here. And Lightroom's going to find the people in the scene, in this case, me. I can click on me. And then I can actually mask out all these different elements of myself, facial skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, iris people, lips, hair, facial hair, and clothes, and then adjust things very deliberately based on those areas, right? It's similar to what we saw with the adaptive portrait presets, but this is the slightly more manual way, but we're still getting Lightroom to actually do the heavy lifting of actually masking these areas, right? So facial hair, for example, I could enhance my beard. I can actually come over here to the adaptive portrait and darken the beard, for example. Let's click on that. That looks actually looks quite good. But I could also go in and click facial hair and then darken it myself if I wanted to. If we were to look at this photo, for example, and we want to adjust the sky, I can come in here and I can just click sky for the mask. And Lyrum's going to work it out behind all the trees and, of course, the buildings, which actually is reasonably intricate. So if I wanted to do that and then bring the exposure down of the sky, for example, maybe the contrast up, maybe I want to bring the blacks down a little bit, I could do that. 
right? And it's just a lot easier than trying to brush that in. Or maybe I want to bring the whites up and just brighten that up a little bit or just saturate it. Lyrum has come a long way in the last few years. And these are some of the tools that I use for all of my photo editing, to be honest. These are tools that come in handy pretty much every single time I come to edit photos because there's just so much they're able to do in terms of making my life easier and making the whole process quicker by just getting rid of the kind of manual work that I don't really necessarily want to do anyway, right? I want to get into the creative side of it rather than just drawing the exact right mask. Or it gives me a really good starting point for my photo. There's lots of things that Lyra Met is able to do now that just makes your life so much better. But if there's another tool that you use all the time that we've not touched on here, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see in a future tutorial, let me know as well, because I'm always keen to make the stuff that you guys want to see. Otherwise, there's a full list of all the kit we use for these videos, photos, everything down in the description the video so you can check it all out for yourself. I will see you in the next video. Until then though, as always, thanks for watching.